Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today, we visit the Midlothian Free Health Clinic. And I make wonderful recipes with the now in-season blood orange. But first, let's hop on the bus, Gus. For a while, I wanted to do a segment on the WRTA and getting around by bus in the Mahoning Valley. And finally, I found someone who is a true bus user. Remember my buddy, uh, Stosh, the artistic director for the Valley Western Reserve? Well, you're from Manhattan. Yes. And you don't have a car, so you really rely on this as your main means of transportation. I do. And you know, the other thing is, it's, it's just a way to kind of get the pulse of, of uh, any place you are, is to ride their public transportation. But it gets me to where I need to go, and I know how to do the transfers. I have all my, my bus schedules here. Uh, I mean, this is going to be great. We're going to go to lunch. So uh, we're up here on the west side. Uh, where you reside, yes. and then we're gonna head downtown to transfer. Yes. And I think we'll go to Kravitz Deli. You in the mood for a uh, good hot oh, bowl yeah. of soup? I am. That's gonna be great. That's gonna be great. So we're going on the on the number 40 Austin line right now, and we're okay. gonna transfer once we're downtown. The bus is pretty full. People telling me that nobody rides the bus. Where are you going, Skyler? Oh, I'm just coming from Walmart in Austin Town, going home now. Now, will you transfer downtown like we're doing? Yes. And do you take the bus daily? Yes. So this is how you get around town? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with the service and the timeliness? Very much. I'm here with Clara, and are you a uh, frequent bus rider? Yes, I am. Where do you live that you, and how do you work this? Downtown at the Media Plaza across from City Hall. So it's so convenient for me. Everywhere I go, I'm let off in the front of the building, no transfers or nothing. I go out to the malls and to all the Walmarts. And so you don't have a car? No, I don't need one. Well, I'm back here with Callie, and do you ride the bus much? Um, when I'm not working, so, yeah. Well, where are you headed today on this beautiful uh, zero degree day? The mall. The mall, so you're gonna transfer downtown, mm -hmm. and then you'll go out uh, Market Street? Yeah. All right, so now we are at the main bus terminal downtown, and this is where all the transfers happen. And uh, Stosh is my tour guide today, so he's gonna get us. We're gonna go up to Belmont Avenue and have some lunch at Kravitz's. Tracy Naples was our bus driver heading to the downtown, and you have a lot of people on your route. Yes, we do. We do really do have a lot of people on our route. Do you see a lot of regulars? Yes, and we also see some new ones, but mostly regulars. We've got to transfer to the 38 Belmont to get up uh, to Kravitz, and this really is a happen of joy. Yeah, it is. Uh, we're gonna, we have our transfers. We have to pay an extra 25 cents so we can get a transfer, and uh, we have those in hand, and we're on our way. So do you come in here, and then you just grab all the different schedules? Well, I gr grab the ones of, of the areas that I want to go to, and then I just figure out my, my trip. Well, this is another pretty uh, filled bus. Now, Stosh. Tell me how this works. What is the cost per trip? Okay, if you pay in cash or coins, it would be $1.25. But if you get one of these cards, it's 15 rides for $12.50. So that's a good deal. Now you're heading over to Aldi's. Yeah, I'm heading over to Aldi's. Do you use the bus quite a bit? Oh, quite a bit, yes, quite a bit. I mean, I'll tell you, it's really on time. It's efficient. You know, where are you coming from, William? I'm coming from my house. I thought you were a South Sider. Well, I live on the north side due to migration and rent costs. Uh, where are you headed now? You're going down to transfer? Uh, yes, I'm going to Boardman. And what will you be doing in Boardman? I'm going to the mall. Do you like the bus? Um, I do not like the bus, and I'm actually banned from the bus station. You can get that on camera, so I got to hop out at the corner. Are you a troublemaker? I am not a troublemaker. Okay, now how the heck do you get banned from the bus station? Because my hands was cold and I be having to put them in my pants to keep warm and he like, you sagging. Banned, 30 days. We're at our destination, Kravitz, and it's 11.25. We started at 5 till, 
it took us one half hour with the transfer. Yeah, it's it's it, it, it's quick. It's quick, and you can get where you want to go. And uh, the connections are great. Um, I mean, we would love to if it went a little longer, you know, <laughs> yeah. into the evening. But uh, it's it's you can find your way around. Uh, the city. I'll tell you, I am impressed so far. Very impressed. Let's go in and uh, get some uh, warm, hot food. You ready, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dana is going to uh, wait on us today. And you know what, Dana? We uh, took the bus here. All right. Do you get many people on the bus? We do. We get a few. And business, uh, we're here a little earlier than, you know, the lunch hour. But I am just thrilled that you now have uh, full bar service. And we're going to have a little Irish coffee here. How is it going since you put beer, wine, and uh, alcohol Very in the menu? Very good. People are psyched. They're, they're excited about it. Well, uh, I'm gonna, did you make this yourself? I did. I'm gonna check it out and let, let you know how you did, okay? Sure. All right, cheers. Cheers. That is oh. delicious. I feel like I'm in San Francisco at the Buena Vista. <laughs> <laughs> the Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Well, this is for you, Phil. Happy anniversary, Cheers. four years at the tree. So what have we learned? It's been a great journey. <laughs> what we have learned is that people want to come to celebrate here at Magic Tree. We have these beautiful signs for every occasion and for my wife and I over the last four years, to be able to do what we've done for the community with fundraisers has been very dear to our heart. And what do you see coming up in the future? Well, we have a huge building. We have incredibly good craft beer, incredibly good food we make from scratch, and our wine on tap. We have something for everybody here at Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. I want everyone to come down and let us create a memory for them. That's right, and I love that they have the trays to go. Party, pick it up, take it to the office, take it at home, and you can party at the tree no matter That's where right. you are. Congratulations. Good Cheers. job. Part of growing up in Youngstown is growing up with Rolly Brothers Markets. Even friends who have moved out of town come to shop and say hi when they're home for a visit. And my family has always shopped at Rolly's, and today they are still my favorite grocery store. My recipes depend on the best ingredients, and that's why I get them at Rolly's, where you'll always find the freshest food at the best prices. Rooley Brothers is a proud sponsor of the KC Malone Show. The quality that customers have come to expect is true local flavor. Hurry into a Spitzer location near you to enjoy the lowest prices of the year on some of our best-selling 2016 models. You can save thousands on your new vehicle with the Spitzer Model Year on Sales event. Spitzer, saving you more since 1904. Four for five till six. Happy hour at Sadie's Place inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. All day, you pursue your dreams. And all day, I pursue mine. Knowing we are always there for each other. You are my best friend, my true love. Together, we shine twice as bright. The Everest Two Stone Collection, forever more. A diamond is forever. Available at Kamara Jewelers. It's Golden String Radio's variety show, January 17th at the Morley Theater. Enjoy various acts from Purple Cat Productions with special guest Galen Lee, violinist and songwriter. Order tickets at goldenstringradio.org. Well, today my husband Ken is going to join me in the kitchen, I'm here. and here this to help. is going to be a really good segment. We're going to make a main dish, a salad, and a cocktail. And the main ingredient, one of my favorite the blood things, orange. blood oranges. You got the post-holiday funk going on, you feel like ugh, winter doldrums are setting in, and then in the grocery store, here comes a little beacon of light. It's beautiful. The it's blood beautiful. orange. Nice and red. 
love them. Uh, originally, they're from Italy and Spain, and now they're cultivated and grown in California and Texas. And our season in the United States is about December to May. Yep. So we start seeing them around here, usually January, February. And that's why you purchase cases and cases I of I do, it. and I juice them, I freeze them, and I just love this as an ingredient. And they're really rich in antioxidants, vitamin C, they're vitamin not so A. Sweet. They're not as sweet as a regular navel, but they are delicious. So take advantage. The bounty is now. And um, in the States, Moros, which means dark or black, is uh, the most common variety. So we are going to start with a chicken dish, okay? then a salad, and then get ready for my cocktail. So let's get going with some blood oranges. Sounds great. For this recipe, you'll need the juice of five blood oranges, four skinless, boneless chicken breasts. You'll need one tablespoon of butter, one onion minced, five cloves of garlic minced, three quarters cup chicken stock, one quarter cup dry white wine, a teaspoon of chopped parsley, and one tablespoon of honey. I started the recipe last night. I took the four chicken breasts and I marinated them in the juice of two blood oranges. It really tenderizes them and gives them a really nice tangy flavor. So now I've salted and peppered them on both sides and I'm going to brown them and some extra virgin olive oil. It'll be about four or five minutes per side. So let's add them to the hot oil. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, about five minutes per side on browning the chicken. And this is done nicely. All right, so let's turn this off. What I'm going to do is just transfer these to a platter. And this skillet, I am going to melt the butter and get this Moro orange sauce prepared. After this melts, we'll add the garlic and onion. So now I'll add the onion and the garlic. You're going to love this dish. It is so easy. It cooks on the stove top. Not that difficult and everybody will be very impressed when they taste this. We're just gonna cook these for a few minutes to soften them up. Well, the onions are nice and translucent. The garlic is gold. And now we're going to add, this is the juice of three blood oranges. Ooh, look, a great color. We're going to add the white wine and the chicken stock and the parsley. All right, so we are gonna bring this up to a boil. It'll reduce a little bit. Well, this has come to a nice rolling boil and boy, I wish you could be in my mom's kitchen and smell how wonderful this is with the onions and the blood orange. So now I'm going to put the chicken breasts back in and let them absorb all this great flavor. And then I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna lower the heat to low to let it simmer. And I'm gonna cook this about 15 minutes more. And then halfway through, I'll turn them and then we'll be done. While we're waiting for the chicken to uh, finish cooking, I will make one of my favorite salads. It's spinach and arugula. And then I use a uh, blood orange dressing. So what I've done is I've washed and torn up some baby arugula and some baby spinach. And I'll just layer this with some sliced, pretty thin red onion. I just love the bite of red onion. If you want, you can use a more mild onion, but I like the red. And then I took a Moro blood orange, peeled it, and I am just going to uh, put the segments and scatter them along the top. And then I have about a quarter of a cup of feta cheese that I've crumbled. We'll put that on top. And last but not least, some unsalted sunflower seeds. So now we'll make the dressing. The salad dressing is super easy. Half cup extra virgin olive oil, half cup, of my favorite, the blood orange juice. We'll add that, and then a small shallot, chopped fine, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and then one tablespoon of sherry vinegar. Love that stuff. And then a little salt, 
and a little pepper. All right, so now I will whisk this together. And this makes quite a bit. So you could uh, put it in a jar or container and it'll keep for a week or two in your refrigerator because you're not gonna use that much on this. But look at that beautiful color, beautiful flavor. And uh, we will drizzle this over it right before we serve it. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Oh, and this chicken is ready. It is beautiful. Here is our last and final step. I am going to remove these from the skillet. Very nice. Oh, tender, smells and looks delicious. And there's that real pretty pink color to it because of the blood orange. I'll put this aside and we're gonna use these pan juices. So to thicken it a bit, I'm gonna turn this up. There we go, back to high. And I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of honey. We'll let that dissolve, give it a couple minutes, cook it down, it'll be, just have a little more body, and then we'll pour some of it over our chicken before we serve it. So the salad's prepared, we've got the chicken ready to go, and the last <laughs> part of this puzzle Yes, let's have a drink. cocktail. Sure. Ken, I gotta thank you, because as you can see, he looks like he's been a butcher most of the day, but he's got they all are juicy. the, uh, Blood orange juice from juicing these uh, all day for me. And from cutting the onions and everything else. Exactly. Now this is a recipe I think you're going to love. This cocktail, I have uh, named it myself. It's called My Bloody Valentine How Martini. Creative. Okay. This is enough for two. So are you ready? We have some I'm ice ready. in the shaker. All right, Ken, Chilled I'm glasses. going to need a half a cup of fresh squeezed and there it orange is. juice. That's okay. going in the shaker. Then I'm going to need four teaspoons of this St. Germain, which is an elderflower liqueur. All right, so then I'm going to need uh, two teaspoons of fresh lime juice. There you go. I'm going to need one half cup of vodka, whatever kind you like. And I'll tell you, this measuring is really, really nice. This measuring cup I bought you to make sure that we have <laughs> the exact I was pouring a little heavy there for a while, yes. and then a little too light, a little too heavy, and then a little, too a little splash, about an a eighth of bit. a cup. Just a splash of okay. salsa. Got it. All right, so then we'll shake them all up. We chilled these really nicely before. Look at the beautiful color. Very nice. Don't be stingy. I'm Thank stick you here. for being my sous chef today. It was hard work. I know. Cheers. Oh, mm. wow. It's a good sipping cocktail. Delicious. Really, you're going to fall in love with the blood oranges. Just go to my website, CaseyMaloneShow.com. You'll have the My Bloody Valentine Martini recipe, the arugula salad with the dressing, and the chicken dish. It's all right there. You are going to learn to love winter when we get the citrus in stock. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, honey. You're welcome. This is the Casey Malone Show. Hi, everybody. I'm Danny, owner and operator of Cthulhu Prime Meats, a third generation butcher shop that not only specializes in quality, but also in customer service and doing things in a new technological way. Chris here is our customer service manager. Chris, what do you think that we do differently than any other grocery store? I think we personally not only offer great product, but we can offer a great customer service experience as well. We try and treat all our customers like they were family and friends, ask how their family's doing just so they can keep in touch, and give them that customer experience that they deserve. And the nice part is we not only do that inside the store, but also on CthulhuPrimeats.com, where you can buy a lot of our products that we carry here, whether it be grass-fed beef, organic chicken, some of our specialty burgers and bacon, those are wonderful, and we're gonna provide that same customer experience online as we do in store. Come see us in store or online. Make your next meal one to remember. Cerny means trucks. For over 50 years, the Cerny family has been the area's leader for medium and heavy duty international trucks. New or pre owned, Cerny means trucks. Easy to find. Cerny Motors is conveniently located at Route 46 and 80. At Cerny Motors, no job is too big or too small. 
Cerny Motors Service will keep you on the road. For service, parts, sales, lease, or rental, Cerny means trucks. Hurry into a Spitzer location near you to enjoy the lowest prices of the year on some of our best-selling 2016 models. You can save thousands on your new vehicle with the Spitzer Model Year on Sales event. Spitzer, saving you more since 1904. mom was always in my corner. Always pushing me to do better. I couldn't have asked for a better mother. So when she needed assisted living... I did my research. Doctors, nurses... And others with family and assisted living... They all said... Trust the name you know. Briarfield. For assisted living with top health care experts, a caring staff, and a comfortable home-like setting... Trust the name you know. Briarfield. Trust the name you know. Briarfield. Proudly serving the Valley for over 20 years. Five Buck Burger Mondays at Sadie's Place, inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. The First Presbyterian Church is the new home of the Midlothian Free Health Clinic. The clinic is staffed by devoted volunteers, and it is open evenings on the second and fourth Thursday each month by appointment. Well, in their beautiful new digs, I'm going to talk with the executive director, Maureen Cronin. Wow. Wow is This right. is really a beautiful setup for the clinic. It certainly is, Casey. We are so lucky to have this facility located in the lower level of the First Presbyterian Church at 201 Wick Avenue, just up from downtown and across from YSU in Youngstown, Ohio. The negotiations, the planning, the preparation, I mean, how long did all this, um, you know, take? Amazingly enough, it only took about eight weeks. We were told in November of 2014 that the Midlothian facility was housed in the Bethlehem Lutheran Church yes. was closing. So Jim Benedict, the chair of our board, and myself spent all of November and December looking for space. However, during that exact time, Youngstown State University was negotiating with Pastor Carolyn Griffith of the First Presbyterian Church about opening a satellite office to house their physical therapy department and to treat patients. So we teamed up with Pastor Carolyn. How did this all come to be? It's interesting you would ask that question. We have been in conversation, our congregation, for a long time about our presence here in downtown Youngstown. Uh, what can we do for our neighborhood? What ways can we engage more with our neighbors? Because that's always our purpose. And so we had this huge space down here that was not configured the way it is now, mm -hmm. but needed to be configured for something else. So what would it be helpful? What, what thing could we do, what ministry could we do down here that would be helpful to our neighborhood? And all of a sudden, we got in conversation with uh, YSU, Dr. Joe Mosca mm -hmm. from YSU, and uh, found out that the Midlothian Free Health Clinic was no longer able to stay in their current location. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe it. Your name is Tracy Jordan. Cash been for, well, I won't say how many years, but... <laughs> I love... <laughs> yes that character. I absolutely love him. I get and that you must time. get that all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time, except when it comes to paying my credit card. When I'm trying to get free <laughs> dinner at Olive Garden, like, it doesn't work then. <laughs> They're like, okay, and I'm Eddie Murphy. We'll keep it moving. You know? right. <laughs> what got you involved in this way back in the beginning? Well, our minister uh, and the nurse, one nurse that was going there named Miriam Whetstone, the two of them thought it would be really nice to have a free clinic, and uh, or to have a clinic. So they talked about it, and uh, little by little, it became reality. And what about you, Carol? Where was your area of expertise? My area of expertise was at Northside Hospital, Valley Care now. I worked there for almost 30 plus years off and on. Bree Hunter is a volunteer here and you're kind of like a candy striper. And how did you get involved with the uh, clinic? Well, I'm a senior member of Austin Town Fitch NHS and we're required to get so many volunteer hours a year. So my mother came to me and told me that they needed volunteers for the clinic and I obviously jumped on the opportunity because I love helping people and 
I mean, I have to do it anyway, so why not do something I love? Well, the clinic's new home began because of the collaboration between the university and their physical therapy school and the church. And then it added on to the clinic. And Levon Johnson, you are taking uh, advantage of the physical therapy here. Yeah, they do a great job. They really help me. They give me things that I can do at home so that when I come here, I can, each week I can uh, in, increase my ability. So. You were really the one who kind of wrapped this whole package together. You know, being on the board at the clinic and then bringing this in. It but there were a lot of other people that helped put this together. Uh, Dr. Lane Graf, in the, uh, she's the chair of the PT program. Mm -hmm. uh, Dean Mosca, Joe Mosca, uh, from the College of Health and Human Services. Uh, we have a, a rather large grant, uh, the Senefani uh, grant for vulnerable populations over at YSU, and uh, through Dean Mosca and Dr. Landgraf, we were able to um, bring forward some some funding to allow us to put together the the program. I love your new digs. I oh, mean, this you. is really nice. Yeah, we love them too. We love them too. Yeah, <laughs> and. You know, now that the affordable health care is in place and uh, because of Medicaid, what are you seeing differently in the patients you do have? I know they've decreased. We, we target, the clinic's target is for patients that are, have not enough income to afford insurance, but they, they have too much income to qualify for public assistance. So it's all the people that fall between the cracks. So even though Obama, Obamacare is out there, there's still a large number of people that fall between the cracks with that. And so we, we take care of them. And there are a lot of people in transition. They've just lost a job. They're waiting to get benefits. Mm -hmm. People will just released from prison. Um, uh, transients moving through the area or coming in the family, coming back to the area that have been elsewhere and lost job or insurance or whatever. So um, it fits a pretty big need overall for the community. You may not be able to do anything medical, but there's a lot of things you can do to just help the guy out next door. So I think uh, that's a big part of the message of what we do here. My show is always on. Watch previous segments at CaseyMaloneShow.com Sponsored by the Ingram Law Office. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.